Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I am standing in the backyard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden in zone 8B. Here to my left is a contorted mulberry. To my right is my woodshed and my rack upon which I dry uh, sheep fleece when I wash it to get ready for spinning. So this is a temporary um, amendment to the side of my woodshed. It comes up and down depending on my needs. So you can hear from the air conditioner running that it is once again unpleasantly hot here and frustratingly hot. Oregonians tend to be, um, at least Western Oregonians, tend to be uh, a little bit delicate when it comes to hot weather. I know for us, we left Missouri almost 20 years ago, specifically because we wanted to live on the West Coast near family, but also because neither my partner nor I are really made for super humid hot summers. So. It can be a little frustrating when we are expecting the kinds of summers that we had 15 years ago and find that it is hot day after day after day. But I am trying to be positive and focus on all the great things coming out of my garden. So I only have one quarter acre here, but I get so much out of my garden. It's such an abundant place and I really cherish the time I can spend here even when it's 90, 95 degrees. Right now I'm working on harvesting plums and because it's been so hot and dry, my plums are kind of accelerated in their uh, maturation. And right now I am picking Bavay's Green Gage plums, which are, as you can see, kind of these little ugly green and kind of beigey brown plums. They are not much to look at, but they are, in my opinion, a superior dessert plum. My absolute favorite plum. I'm standing here because my bevets is right here, tucked in next to my woodshed. It is a diva of a fruit tree. It is constantly plagued by issues like bacterial gamosis. It flowers heavily, but rarely fruits heavily. And you know what? I don't really care because the fruit I do get off of it is my absolute favorite plum. So I am willing to give part of my very cherished space in my garden, which is quite limited to this tree for as long as it is able to keep going and enjoy the fruit off of it while I can. So let me show you a little bit of the harvest and then I wanna talk about checking on one of my other favorite fruit trees. I don't know yet, we're gonna be uh, looking at her today to see if the fruit there is mature and ready to pick. So hang tight with me. You can see here that this tree got really badly sunburned during our earlier heat waves and it's really, really struggled because of that. I am encouraged to see new growth coming out from the trunk, but I had whole branches that died in the heat. So here you can see the plums. They are green with a brownish cast to them. Mature plums are only about this big. They're not a very big plum. So I'm probably only gonna get about 25 or 30 plums off of this tree this year. And when I say that this is a dessert plum, I really mean it. It is not an attractive plum for jam. It will make a muddy colored, uh, really unappealing jam, but for fresh eating, it has a rich honey flavor to it. Uh, many layers of complexity that I find I don't get in some of the other plums. It's just a fantastic dessert plum. So if you've got space for a tree that's a little bit of a diva and doesn't set heavily, you might consider a Bavay's Green Gage. Now, I'm gonna keep picking these in a minute, but I wanna take you down to another spot in my orchard to check on one of my other favorite fruit trees that is not a diva. It is very, very resilient and uh, hardy and low fuss for me, and I'm gonna see if those are ready to pick. So the next tree that we're gonna go visit is actually in here in my poultry run, right next to my bees. And growing in front of it is a very, very, very 
pollinator heavy motherwort plant. It's covered with wasps and bees and hoverflies right now. And right beyond it is my beloved suckle pear tree. And we're gonna go check and see if it's right today. The orchard this time of year is really, really crowded, just full of fruit. You can see this medlar, super laden with fruit, won't be ripe for quite a while yet, not till late fall. Behind that is all of this uh, mother wart that's so full of bees, so I'm just trying to be really careful and not get stung. And right behind that is my beloved suckle pear tree. We're gonna check today to see if the pears are mature and ready to pick. Now, you don't pick pears when they are ripe. Pears ripen from the inside out, so if they feel ripe on the outside, they are rotten in the middle. Uh, European pears need to be picked uh, when they meet, at least for me, three criteria. And so we're going to check and see. Uh, last week these pears weren't there yet, but they may be there today. Right, still struggling with the medlars here. So I'm going to just have a little caveat here and let you know that the three criteria I use for when to pick my European pears do not apply to Asian pears. You can check out the Home Orchard Education Center. They have a great blog post that will help you know when to pick your Asian pears. Now in this garden, in which I'm tangled in a rose, now in my garden I only have room for one pear tree and I wish I could grow more but I specifically chose the seckle because it is highly resistant to fire blight. It's a smaller tree and it produces a lovely little dessert pear and it produces prolifically so I get a very large crop off of a small tree. First way you know if your pears are ready to pick is if you see pears on the ground. I see one down here. I see one down here. My chickens have been pecking. So once they start dropping, you really need to look to see if they are mature. So we're going to pick them when they are not super rock hard. They're still firm, but not rock, rock hard. That's my first criteria. And the second one is when I lift the pear like this and twist gently does it come off easily this one does not but i'm going to check one that's over here in a little bit more sunshine so lift gently does it want to come off easily in my hand and this one came right off very very easily there's a little scarring from where they rubbed against each other but that's okay suckle pears also when they're maturing if they're in a lot of sunshine they will get a little bit of a blush to them so same thing, I just wanna lift gently up. Oh, it came off really easily, I didn't have to tug. That's the first sign to me that it's ready, potentially, to pick the whole tree. All right, I found a little bit more breathing room here on the other side of this motherwort. And uh, again, way back there is a beehive in between suckle pear and then right here, motherwort. So, I am again looking for when I see pears falling on the ground, just a couple of them, and that means I'm ready to start checking for my three criteria. The first one is, are the pears no longer rock hard? They should be firm, but not super rock hard. And it just takes time and experience handling those pears to get used to the difference. The second one is when I gently lift and maybe twist a tiny bit, does the pear separate easily from the tree? There's the abscission layer where the stem attaches to the tree. That should separate easily on a ripe pear. If I have to tug or yank or twist really hard and um, doesn't come off, that pear is not ready for picking. So the third criteria is that once the pear has come off easily, I need to cut it open and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so when I've cut open my pear, I wanna look inside and see what the seeds look like. Now these seeds are a beige color. If they're super white, that means that your pear is nowhere near being ready to harvest. If they're still kind of a beigey color, also not quite ready yet, even if it's coming off easily. You want these to be a nice brown color and that's an indication that your pears are ready to pick and put in storage. So I'm gonna give my pear here show you the seeds again. I'm gonna give my pears here a 
another week and I'll check them again. This does mean that I'm sacrificing a pair every week to uh, check on the status of it, but it's far better than harvesting the pears before they are mature or letting them go too long and they start rotting on the tree. Again, you are picking pears when they are mature, not when they are ripe. You pick them mature and you store them. I've stored them under my kitchen table or under a bed or in the basement somewhere cool, cooler than the rest of the house. In my breakfast nook works really well because it's right next to the vent for my air conditioner and so it keeps good air circulation and it keeps the area cool. And you let them slowly ripen on their own and they will be ready to enjoy in the fall. Um, so those are my tips for picking European pears, how to tell when they're ready to harvest when they have reached maturity. If you are considering planting a European pear, I really encourage you to check out the Home Orchard Education Center. They have a lot of information on European and Asian pears and picking the right variety for you. One Green World Nursery also stocks a lot of really awesome varieties of pear. I got my seckle pear at One Green World several years ago. One Green World also carries Bavay's Green Gage Plum, so definitely worth, worth checking them out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up please um, consider subscribing and check out my brand new sister channel, Parkrose Hausfrau, in which I talk much more about uh, ecological homemaking skills. Thanks.